Wednesday, August 23rd, 2023. BMW. Like any other engine build, build, repair or whatever, first thing what I'm bringing inside of the engine room are the fuel injectors, high pressure pumps and the fuel rails. Better safe than sorry, right? This, I have, I have right bank one and bank two on the high pressure pumps because they are the same part number and because of the calibration, just in case, I would like to put it on the same bank. Same thing for the injectors because of the calibration, because of a, it was running at that position, except if the owner, he brought me new fuel injectors. I don't know about that, we'll gonna see, we'll gonna find out later. It's not now the time. And the fuel rail here, yeah, it's just on the stainless steel table. I haven't touched it yet. I haven't prepared it, clearly, it's dirty. Let's go outside to see the engine currently, how it looks like. All right, the engine currently at this state. The parts are there, whatever I remove, I just, I place it there, I didn't throw it there, obviously. This is for the guys to prepare it. The rest of the parts, it's for me. All the rest, it's on me. All right, that's how it looks like. Let's check, let's open the covers. Now I'm gonna open the covers, I'm gonna check the timing, then I'm gonna release the timing, take all the timing components out, not all, to pull out the cylinder heads and to see the melt piston at the end. Moving on. I was not expecting this to be honest at 35,000 kilometers. I'm gonna show you what I mean. I put the damper pulley in place, okay? That's in place where I'm pointing, all right? Then I try to lock the camshafts. These two camshafts here, it's pointing inwards. And this camshaft, this is okay, the intake camshaft, bank two. The exhaust camshaft, bank one, bank two, it's tilted to a little bit more to the right, as you can see it. I already tested by losing the bolts, I saw it. Now, what's my theory on that? First of all, I haven't used the tool to preload the guide. That's the first one. I need to open it here, remove the tension and preload the guide. But it will gonna have some slippage. The cam adjuster from the uh, camshaft itself. That's what I believe. I doubt that the timing chain has been stretched at 35,000 kilometers. I mean, it might be for a one ten of millimeter, nothing more than this. So we are moving on. I'm continue here opening. Let's remove the tensioner. I want to secure it down properly. I didn't force the tools by any means. I don't want to destroy my tools. Yeah, all right. Let's lose it and move on. Come adjusters out inside of the engine room. Let's go out. And here we go. Now, I have removed the tensioners. Obviously, the camera adjusters I saw you earlier. The guide that has from up the chain. I have removed all the bolts except the one in the middle, and the same thing from the other bank. I don't remember which bank, which bank has a melt piston. Uh, tensioners, guides. One's there. The other one, where about it? It's down over there, and the head bolts are over there. Now, let's take the cylinder heads out to, to check inside to see how it looks like. Bank one cylinder head out, and it looks like that it was the number three, the melt one. That's the number one, number two, and number three, down over there. Hi there. And this is where it happened, the event, near top that center. Like I'm saying, this point from here till here, it's the most critical one. So here, this is where it happened. I saw some scoring here on the cylinder. Yeah, it bites the fingernail, unfortunately. The same thing here. It has a bent road, so what? That's how it looks like. Ha! Huh. I put the bed. <laughs> Pay attention. I put the bed that at least the number four connecting here, it's gonna be bent. 
see how near to the wall it's here the piston and how much gap has here here I can see the piston ring here I cannot see nothing I put a bet that here the number four at least the number four has a bent rod and it looks like also a little bit the number one but remember my words when it comes to time let's open also the other one bang two cylinder head out yeah, I'm gonna inspect the cylinder heads later, not now, not now. Screw the cylinder heads, let's see the cylinders here. Cylinder number five. Yeah, yeah. It's not very healthy, the connection of the number five. Number six looks a little bit more decent, seven more decent. Number eight, see the gap again here, and see the gap here. Don't forget that we are talking about where is the wrist pin, okay? It's like this. It's, I'm not talking about north and south, I'm talking east and west at 3 o'clock and at 9 o'clock that's what I'm talking about here is the wrist pin so you cannot have if you, you can have so much tight clearance to the cylinder wall only when the connection is bent so definitely the number 4 and the number 8 have a bent connectors moving on let's put also this on the video by the way all right because some people they're saying ah there's no signs of detonations pre-ignitions or something so explain to me how you have a melt piston Explain to me how you have bent connection rod. Explain to me why it's not being hammered the cylinder head, it looks beautiful from both banks. So you can have pre-ignition detonations, you can have more pressures inside the compression chamber without having any signs, either on the head gasket, on the cylinder head, or on the piston itself. So stop saying, ah, you know, you don't see hammering on the piston or on the cylinder head, doesn't, mean, doesn't say anything this, doesn't mean nothing. For those who are saying that, I ah, oh, see the number three. You see something on the number three? I don't see something. I don't see nothing on the number three. It looks perfect. If you compare, let us say, the number three with the number two, it's exactly the same. The number one, the same. It's not suffering. You know, the top of the piston, there is no sign of pre ignition detonations anywhere. Explain the melt point. Da. So, don't say that. Huh? There is no sign of pre ignition detonation. It's supposed to be fine. No, it's not. Moving on. Smart asses, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so ends in upside down. <laughs> Let's continue. Let's move on. <laughs> Opening the oil pan, and what you see inside the oil pan? <laughs> you see a piece of the piston. You see a piece of the oil control ring. You see piston rings over there. Oh boy! Yeah. That's the second piston ring and there it's the top ring Okay, the question is, is it only from one piston? Is it from the number 3 piston only or is it also from another? We'll go find out later on Some pieces here And ha, piston ring here Nice Nice. It depends who you are asking. Yeah. Moving on. Let's see how it looks like the piston from here, from this side. Yep. That looks good. Obviously, that looks good. And then the number four. See the wrist pin. See the connecting rod. It looks bent to me. We're gonna find out. I'll gonna remove it. Yep, all of them. Yep, too close to the left. Let's see, let's take out the piston and connect rods. Now, all pistons connect rods are out. Okay, crank spins fine. I don't see any problem with the crank. If it was, if it's on my hand, definitely I'll gonna strip off completely everything. I'll gonna remove also the crankshaft and the main bearings to see the condition. I'm not trusting anything with all these parts inside of the engine, all this shrapnel. Okay. Uh, then what I did, I was getting out the pistons one at a time, passing it through the petrol, blowing with air, and Mr. Derek he was writing for me down the number to so don't mix up. So we have number one, two. 
no need to introduce you on the number three, you already saw that earlier. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now, all this that's nice and not clean, just does have oil on it, it's been degreased. Let's get it inside of the engine room. I want to see the connecting rods and the top piston in. I have a reason why I'm saying that. Now, the engine, please cover it, standing by until it comes to the customer. No, no, don't cover it, make it upside up. I want to bring the dial board cage to measure the cylinder. I want to see the, 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 the scoring that has inside. Yeah, make it upside up. Yeah. Back inside of the engine room. Now, it's in order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, up to eight. All right. Why I said up to eight? I went up to seven and then I said, <laughs> yeah, okay, never mind. Now, before I touch it, before I make, before I separate the piece from the connecting rod, so I'm not going to do it in all of them. I said the number four, the number eight, right? And maybe I'm going to remove also another one that will going to be much better, in better condition. Top ring. Okay. All right. Yeah, forget on the number three. Just a second. Let me, let me make them all up. Okay, I was making the number six here up and I spot something. Well, I'm gonna show you later. All right. Acceptable. No case. Forget it. <laughs> not good. Not good. Definitely not good. Not good. Okay, the gap that you see here on this piston ring on the top and the number one, okay, all right. To be honest, only the number eight has the best uh, tension, the top ring, okay? Forget the second. Now, what did I spot on the number six? I was turning it and I saw this here, here. This is what you see here. It's cracked. The piston has a crack. Let's see if it's continuing from this side. Yep, it's continuing from this side. This is a puzzle. I have said that before, it's not the first time. There is a crack here. So the only thing what's holding together the piston is the piston rings. All right. Okay, we'll gonna see that. We'll gonna come to that. <laughs> Dang it. So even, to be honest, even if it didn't have a melt piston, or if it didn't have a crack piston, let us say, with the connection was bent like that, and the connection bearings at this key, in this condition, you're not gonna have a happy end. I mean, keep in mind that if I, if I'm right, it has only 35,000 kilometers. That's what I'm, what I'm writing on the title of the video. All right. So, to be the connection of bearings like that, to have a bent connectors, and to have a bent piston rings, surprising. This it was successful. This this failure here was successful. Why? Because it held together the piston. It didn't disintegrate the piston to leave the connecting rod and explode everything. And after that, you're going to dissolve the cylinder head. Same thing on that. The customer is very lucky. Then I want to show you something on the piston skirt. In which cylinder I saw it on the number four, I think. That I said, I said that. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. That, that's the number four. Yes, that's the number four. All right. You see this sign here that's much more polished. Here it's okay. Same thing from this side. On this edge there, I'm talking about this position here. All right, you see here that has carbon, but from the other side, it's nice and shiny. This is because it came near to the cylinder wall. Why did this happen? Because the connection is bent. That's why this happened. So I'm gonna leave this here to open it to check the connecting rod. All right, then, <coughs> then. Let's open this. You know what? I'm gonna secure somewhere, support secure somewhere the phone to open the to remove the piston rings from this one. Okay, and there is there are more uh, bent connecting rods. I said also the number eight that uh, it's bent the connecting rod. You can see here the polishing mark at this point, and you can see here yeah, it's okay, it's a little bit more decent. This one, uh, no, no need to say that you cannot trust none of these pistons. Obviously, you cannot reuse none of these pistons. One is melt, the other one is cracked, the other one going for scrap. And you have also yeah, some pieces here. The connectors are bent, so what you see here is good for scrap. It goes back to the customer, it doesn't belong to me. I'm just saying. All right. 
Let's do it one at a time. Let's separate the wrist pin first to check the connecting knot and then I'm gonna open the puzzle. Piston and connecting knot number four, that's the wrist pin, that's the seat clip to secure it. Okay, let's see, is the connecting knot bent? I mean, even by eye, <laughs> you can see that's fucked up. <laughs> let's put it here on this table. I don't even have to do it, but it's just for, just for some people, all right? I mean, it's badly bent. All right, let's turn it the other way around. Now, there it's touching, and you can see the curve. <laughs> you know what? I'm not gonna waste my time with the number eight because also the number eight is gonna be bent, like I said. It's clear. All right, now let's put this back again here in the position. Or five and six. We are going for the number six. I have the special bracket for the phone. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it there and I'm gonna take out the pistol rings. One second to get also the these parts to put back. This is for the owner. It's not for me. I don't want this. Even if you leave it here, you're gonna go all these pieces, all these things, you're gonna go for scrap. Like I said. Uh, let me support the phone to take out the piston rings and see our puzzle. <laughs> All right, looks steady there, right? Yep. At least you're not gonna have a turbulence. <laughs> Top ring. Second ring. Come on now, where is it? Ah, there you go. What's, what's on this side? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oil control ring. Where I'm pointing, you can see. Oh no, it's not coming out. Okay, I was thinking it's gonna come apart. It's indeed it another one here to come out. Where I'm pointing. It's a little bit down here. You see that's opening? Whoops, now ah, again. Ah, the, this, this piece here, it's broken. And this, it's not fully broken. What the same, what the same. I was thinking it's gonna be a nice uh, puzzle. It, it get cracked till down here. Wait just a second. Maybe it's gonna be better like that. It has a crack till here. The, the only thing what's holding it is this one. <laughs> nope, we don't have a puzzle and I cannot break it because it doesn't belong to me. If he wants the customer, I can give him the hammer to hammer it the piston here, bap, and to make it a one, two, three pieces, the piston after that. <laughs> we don't have a puzzle. So, what else? Nothing more, nothing less. Ah, no, I want to go outside to measure the cylinders. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. Let, let me get the dial board cage, set it up, and go mm -hmm. out. So, dial board cage is ready. When he reads the needle at zero point, we are at 89 millimeters. This is how much the board. 89 and that's how much it, will, it is calibrated the dial board cage. Let's go outside to the engine to see what's going on All right, here we go again number three cylinder here. I want to see Here where has the scoring All right, the cylinder at this point it's 500 millimeter greater yep, That's how it looks like more than 500 millimeter greater let me zoom out. Five hundred. This way. Five hundred. Let's see the number two. It's consistent. Five hundred. All of them. Now this is a little bit less than four hundred. That's a little bit less than 400. 
the number one 500 less than 500 less than 400 I might send the machine shop the block have a look on it it's as a second opinion I doubt more than 300 less than 400 Well, am I more than oh, 500 or millimeter greater? And the number 8, it's 300. Where I'm pointing? Four. Four. Five. Less than five. Yeah. Yep. Can I clean carefully the aluminium that's stuck on the cylinder wall? It's not important that much aluminium. The aluminium I can clean. The thing is, this, this line and this line, these two lines. Yeah, don't forget that the wall it's not uh, thick. It, it's not a sleeve. This one, right? These two lines, I'm going to show you where it's corresponding to the piston, to the metal piston, just a second. So, these two lines, it's supposed to be... It's supposed to be this one and this one, this, these two things, because this is a positive, this came up. This one here and this one here. That's why it makes these two lines. Talking about one is here at this point, and the other one is here at this point. This one and this. It is what it is, right? Yep. All right. I'm gonna stop the video here. Enough. I think it's gonna be a huge video. In much at the end to be three minutes video. Eh? I, I don't know how much I have a record. Uh, stopping here. I don't know how he wants to continue the customer. If he wants me to strip off completely the cranks from the block, for me, that's what I'm gonna do actually. If it was m me on my hand, I'm gonna remove the crankshaft. I'm gonna strip off completely the block. I'm gonna check it at the machine shop just to double check the size, the bore size. For the number three cylinder, I don't know what can I do or the machine shop what he can do I see some run out I'm trusting this tool because with this tool I'm measuring all the blocks I don't have a reason don't trust it I'm doing the same thing with all of them with the same tools same calibration all the same things okay and outside outside we have 33 degrees at the garage that means the block is supposed to be at 33 degrees here inside I have 26.1 Behind the curtain, I have 32. It's the other sensor behind the curtain. So, yep, that's it for now. That's it for now. Let's see how it's gonna be. Let's see how it's gonna end up. I don't know what he wants the customer. We're gonna find out. Over and out. Thank you very much.